Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's learn how to make a simple zoom shader. So it zooms on the area just behind the object. Now, I was actually researching this topic in order to make a video to teach you multiple ways on how you can make a zoomable reference scope. I thought this method would be quite easy, but as it turns out, there's one extremely tricky part of this effect that took me a couple of hours to figure out. So I'm making this video separate just in case someone is searching exactly for this effect, and then stay tuned for the reference scope video coming soon. All right, so here I've got my demo scene. I have it set up using just URP. These assets are from the Cinti Battle Royale and the City Pack. There's links in the description if you want to get it. So just a very basic demo scene. Over here, I've got a simple sphere right in front of the camera, and I've got a script just placing it along with the mouse. So as I move the mouse, I'm moving the sphere. So that's it, very simple. Now the goal is for the sphere to work as the zoom area. So if I put the sphere up there on top of that building, I want to zoom in on that building. Okay, let's begin by making our shader graph. So let's create, let's go into shader, go into URP, and we're going to want to make a new unlit shader graph. Let's call it the zoom shader. Okay, here's the empty shader. Now, the most important thing for this effect is getting the colors behind the object. And for that, you can use the same color node. So if we just put this and we connect this directly into the base color, and as always when working with shader graph, make sure you hit on save ascent and just create a material and just apply this material onto the sphere. And just like this, now we actually see the very first issue that I encountered. So it kind of works, but as you can see, it's extremely buggy. Look at that. It's kind of seen behind it, but it kind of stays behind. It doesn't update all the time. So it's a bit weird. So this one also took me quite a while to figure out, but this one is pretty simple. Just on the graph inspector, go into the graph settings. And over here, just on the surface, instead of making it opaque, make it transparent. So just hit on save asset and yep, there you go. Now it works perfectly. So now you can't see anything about the sphere because the entire sphere is being tinted with the exact same colors behind it. So right now we've got a completely see-through sphere, which means that with just this, we already have the colors behind the sphere. Now all we need to do is just zoom in on those colors. So the way that we can do that is by adding a tiling and offset node. This one outputs a UV input, which is going to be our input on the scene color. And if we just put it like this, we get this very weird effect. So now we want. Next thing we need is over here the input on the tiling and offset, so the input UV. And that one, we want that to be the position on the screen. So we can get that with the node screen position. So this gives our UV and this one is going to be our input. So if we head on save, yep, there you go. Now we're back into normal. So it's just doing a commonly see-through sphere. Now, the next thing that we can play around is over here with the tiling node. So if we put it on 1, 1, then we get the exact normal scale. Now, if we put it at more than 1, say 1.1, and hit on save, and yep, now that one is 10% smaller. So if we go above 1, then essentially we're zooming out. And if we go below 1, so let's say 0.9, then with this, we are essentially zooming in. If I put it at 0.5 to make it a lot more intense, if you can see, yep, it is indeed being quite a bit more zoomed in. So let's make a property so we can easily modify this. So just on the blackboard, let's add a new one. Let's make it a simple float for the zoom amount. Then let's give it a proper name. So underscore zoom amount. And for the mode, let's make it a slider going from, let's say just 0.1 to a maximum of one. And we just connect this one into the tiling node. Okay, so with this, if we now look in the shader, we've got our nice slider. So like that, as you can see, as that one goes down, it is indeed zooming in. Now that doesn't make much sense as the zoom amount goes down, it's zooming in. So it makes more sense if it's inverting. So let's do that. So just here, just add a one minus node, very simple. Just connect this one. So this one will pretty much invert it. So with this, yep, if we bring it down, actually let's make the minimum at zero. So if we bring it down to zero, then we've got our normal see-through sphere. And as we increase, yep, we are indeed zooming in. All right, so far so good. However, here is the part that took me quite a long time to figure out. As I increase the zoom, you can see that it's not really zooming in directly. It is zooming in, but it's zooming in like from the corner. So the image is essentially being stretched from the corner. So as if you were in Photoshop and you grabbed on this corner and increase the size. So it does zoom in, but it is not zooming in directly on top of it. So in here, as I zoom in, you'd expect this area to be zoomed in, but nope, it goes down into the corner. So this is the main issue. And the solution to that is we need to play around over here with the offset. As I increase the zoom amount, it's essentially increasing the image to the right and up. So that means that over here, we need to also increase the offset as we increase the zoom. Now, in order to see what the offset is doing, if I change the offset from 0 to 0.1 and I hit on save, look at how this image changes. 
and if there you go, it moves to the left. So as I increase the offset on the X, it's going to move the final image to the left. As I increase on the Y, it's going to move it down. And if I go into negative numbers, then it goes the other way. All right, so now we know that we need to modify this based on the zoom. So the question then is how much? Now, if we do some simple testing, we can see that if we put the zoom amount at 0.5, then over here we offset by 0.25 and 0.25. If we do that, yep, it is indeed perfect. So right there, it is zooming in directly on top of the metal house. So just with this, it seems like it's correct. However, if I now move the sphere to the right, you would want to zoom in on that little door there. So if I go there, nope, it doesn't actually zoom in on the door. So that means that the offset cannot be just a fixed value. It also has to be based on the screen position. So the nice thing that I tried was really just connecting the screen position onto the offset. But if you do that, nope, it does not actually work. It gets a weird, strange, very different result. So that's not the solution. This was the problem that took me quite a long time to figure out. And the main issue is that the way that a shader works is on a per pixel basis. Meaning that all of these nodes, like for example the scene color, this one is working on a per pixel basis. So for example it goes through this pixel right here on the sphere and gets the color of the scene right behind it. Then runs the exact same logic on this pixel, this one, this one, this one, and so on. So that means that the whole sphere has different values. If I connect the screen position directly into the base color, you can see exactly what I mean. So there you go, you can see that the entire sphere is not tinted in just one shade, but this corner here is much more green, this one corner here is much more red. So that means that every single pixel on this sphere has different values. Whereas the final thing that I realized for this to work is that we need to have all of the pixels, all of the pixels on the sphere, they need to run the same logic based on the object's center position and not on a per pixel basis. So after much trial and error, the only option that I found that worked was passing in the object screen position directly through code. So here on the blackboard, create a new vector 2. Let's call it the object screen position. Then just make sure you've got a reference. And now here you take the object screen position and you multiply it by the zoom amount. And then you take this output and you feed it into the offset. Okay, so this is the shader. Now we need to pass in the object screen position through code. Then I have this very simple script. It really just takes this transform position, uses the camera to convert a worm point into a screen point, and then just takes the screen point, which is set in pixels, and just divides it by the screen dot width in order to get a normalized value. So then I've got a normalized value for the screen position and just send it into the material. So with this, if we now test, so here I am in the center, it works just as usual. But now if I want to go into that corner there, and as I go, and yep, there you go, it does indeed zoom in directly on that corner. And if I go into the top of that building, yep, zooms in there, the shop down there, yep, it zooms in, so everything works perfectly. All right, awesome, so here is the shader fully working. I can look anywhere and everything zooms exactly as intended. So if I want to zoom in the center, it works, zoom in on the corner, and everything works perfectly. Okay, so hopefully if you were looking for how to do this just like I was, hopefully this video helped you so you don't have to spend all of the hours that I spent going crazy trying to figure all of this out. As an example, here is a shader with all of the approaches that I tried while researching this. So I tried remapping the screen position, then splitting to grab the X, Y, and Z and do different things with it. I tried to use the object position, object scale, and tried to do something with it, and do lots of things with the view, object, world, and so on. So I tried tons and tons of possible approaches before I found the right method. And here is the final result working great. So if you come across this issue, then hopefully this video helped you. Now stay tuned for that upcoming video where I will cover three methods for doing a rifle scope, where one of the methods is this one. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.